Hey, it's Jenny. We have a great fitness episode coming up for you, but first I want to thank Chef's Pizza Downtown Kingsport for making it possible. Since 1991, they have been striving to provide a healthy eating alternative. They have whole wheat pizza made out of honey instead of sugar. They have my personal favorite salad bar with potatoes and um, soup, variety of soups, daily Monday through Saturday. So it's a great place, downtown Kingsport, to pick you up a healthy meal. Thanks again, chefs. And after you start losing all that weight, you're gonna wanna go after some new clothes so you can look great. So head on over to the Sophisticated Starlet, a great place to shop downtown. They offer women's clothing, shoes, accessories, and jewelry. I would also like to thank Walmart for um, supplying us with the fitness equipment that we'll be using today. And you can find all of our sponsors on Facebook. Hi, my name is Debbie Beebe. I am a local physical therapist in the Tri-Cities area and today we are going to be talking and showing you about Parkinson's. This is Elaine and Elaine is Jenny's mom. She has recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and she has volunteered to be my guinea pig this morning to show us some exercises that you can do at home. Now although we are going to be focusing on Parkinson's disease, these exercises that we are going to be showing are going to be focusing on balance, posture, coordination, and flexibility. And those are exercises that everyone can use, no matter what your age, and no matter what your diagnosis. So we are going to get started right away, and we're going to have Elaine lay down on the floor. Now at home, what you can do is you can do these in the bed. And I would highly recommend that most of you try the bed first, because if you're not able to get on the floor, we don't want you to get in the floor and not be able to get back up. So try these first on the bed. So Elaine, if you would lay down on your back for me first. Good, okay. Now, if it's more comfortable, you can put a pillow underneath your knees, or if you're okay like this, you, you can do it this way. Now, what we are gonna do first is we are going to have Elaine very slowly turn your head over to the left side, as far as you can go, and we're gonna hold that for just a couple of seconds, and then we're gonna have her turn her head back to the right side. Good, very good. Now what we see in Parkinson's as the disease begins to progress, you can turn back to center now. A lot of times it gets very difficult for you to be able to turn your head all the way to both sides. It is very important that we continue to be able to work our head. And one of the reasons for that is, is that our head is what gives us a lot of vestibular input to tell us where we are in space. And that becomes very important because when we stop moving our head, then our vestibular system sometimes starts to decrease in function, which can also cause dizziness. How many times has some of you had dizziness and not known why? A lot of times, let's think about this for just a minute. How many people do you know are at home sitting in front of their television, in their recliner, in their command center? You have got your remote on one side, you've got your water over here, your book over here, everything that you need to sit in that recliner for a long period of time. And how many times do you move your head? Probably not very often. And that's one of the things that we tend to forget. So this is a very, very, very important exercise. Now, for some people, this may already be difficult because if you can't turn your head all the way to the side, if you do it lying on your back, what happens is you actually get assistance from gravity as you turn your head to the side, you will get some assistance from gravity to give you more range of motion. You can also do this in sitting in what we call a gravity eliminated position where you can just turn from side to side. So. Even though this looks like a very easy exercise, for some of you it may not be, but it's a very important exercise. Okay, now we're gonna ask Elaine to turn over onto your stomach. And again, do these exercises in bed. And what we're gonna ask you to do, I'm gonna have you put your hands down by your side. And I'm going to ask you to just lift your entire body from the waist up, I want you to just lift up and look up toward the ceiling for me. Excellent, excellent, and then back down. And then up again, good, and back down. This is a wonderful exercise for posture. One of the things that we see, good, and then you can just relax for me a second. One of the things that we tend to see with Parkinson's patients 
as they begin to get into the later stages, is we start seeing them begin to fold over and our posture really tends to fold in like this. So it is very important for us to try and keep our shoulders and head up. And this is a great exercise to help stretch those shoulders and get that head back. Now the other thing that you can do here is when you bring your body up, you can also look up toward the ceiling for me. And Elaine, I want you to try that for me. I want you to come up and look up toward the ceiling. Great job. You see she's got nice extension coming in here and that helps to prevent some of that roundness that we see in the shoulders and the back area, okay? Now the next thing that I'm gonna have you do is I want you to kick your legs as if you were swimming. Feel, feel like you're in a swimming pool and I want you to, good. Now can you bring it up from the hip area? Good. And alternate, even alternate from the hips and try to really extend that hip out because this is another exercise that gets to be really difficult that has a, a real important play with when we walk. Great job, okay. Any problem with that at all? It just makes me shake a little bit. It just makes you shake, okay, very good. You're doing a great job. If you get tired, you let me know. Okay, very good, you can go ahead and relax there for me. Good, okay, now I'm gonna have you go ahead and sit up again. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna let you go ahead and sit over here into the chair, okay? Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to progress to some sitting exercises. And again, remember that we are focusing today on posture, flexibility, and balance, okay? One of the things that I want to talk about is just getting in and out of the chair because sometimes that's one of the things that is really hard as we progress with Parkinson's disease, okay? Now, Elaine, what I want you to do for me is I want you to just stand up for me. Good, and then go back down. Very good. You see how right now she is standing up very nice. She has a very nice even flow when she stands and also when she sits. One of the things that sometimes becomes very difficult for people with Parkinson's is that when they go to get up, they have a hard time. It's almost as if they start to freeze. So what I want you to think about, and she's shaking her head, yeah, she's probably already experiencing some of that. So what I want you to think about is I want you to think about doing that quickly. And you can even say, one, two, three, go. Now, how did that feel? You came up pretty quickly. Did it feel okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So that's one of the things that you can do to help it. Think, you know, think to yourself, okay, here we go. One, two, three, go, and up we come. Now, going back down is a whole other ball game. And going down, control is the main factor. You always want to be able to control. So when you are going back down, you want to think, go slow, okay? So you want to sit back down and just remember you want to control that move. Very good. One of the things that you can do to help with this is to actually just practice standing up and sitting down. And I would recommend that if you are having problems with that, try that at least five times, two or three times a day. And if you need to use your arms to help you, that's fine. Use your arms to help you push up, come up, stand there for just a few seconds, and then go back down, remembering that when you go back down, control is very important. Okay. Now, we're going to use this little wand and at home, you can use any number of things. You can use an umbrella, which is a great way to improvise, or you can use a broom handle is a great way. Either Anything you want to use, but pick something light. Don't some, pick something really heavy. You want to use something light. Okay, and I'm going to have you hold on to that. I'm going to have you turn your hands over and put them on top. Very good. Okay, and again, this is one of those things that we're going to be working on. This is going to work on flexibility. What I'm going to have Elaine do is I'm going to have her take this directly overhead, keeping your head nice and straight and forward. And I want you to try and take your arms back as far as you can and even as far back if you can get them behind your head. Now for those of you at home, if you can't get them this far back, take it as high as you can and then bring it back down. When you get up there, I want you to hold that for three or four seconds and then bring it down nice and slow. And keep working on it because as you get used to doing it, it will get easier and easier. Good. And then back down. Excellent. And then one more time. Good. And then back down. Now, with any exercise program, what you want to start out, and you can go ahead and I'll take it. You can start out at home. You may only be able to do five repetitions. That's okay. Do what you can do. And then try to work your way up to doing about 15 or 20 repetitions. Now, with any exercise program when you first start, it's good to shoot for about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, if you're not able to do that much at first, do what you can do. As you continue to exercise, it will get easier and you will be able to do it for a long period of time. Now, another one that we're gonna do for flexibility is I'm gonna have Elaine take and put her hands behind on the back of the chair. 
and then we're going to just really roll those shoulders back and stick that chest out and then I'm going to have her take her head and I'm going to have her look up at the ceiling for me. Great. And again, we're getting two things here. We're opening up this chest area, getting good posture, and we're also moving that head. Okay. And then look back down for me. Good. And then release the arms. And we can do that sitting. Remember the exercise we did? We can do this in sitting, the one that we did with the head, where you turn the head slowly to one side as far as you can go, and then back to this side for me. Good. You can also take the head down as far as you can go, and then back up. Really good input when you are doing this. Great job. Okay, very good. Now, one of the things that we tend to see as therapists with a lot of our patients that come to see us is by the time we get them, we're already starting to see that they're walking in this position. And so what we know is that we've lost some of that flexibility, not only up here, but also down here in the legs. So the next exercise that we're going to show you is going to help to stretch out your, your hamstrings and some of these leg muscles that get really tight when you start walking. So I'm going to have Elaine turn her chair around this way. There you go. And we're going to have you sit there. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one leg and we're going to put it up here in this chair. Got short legs up here, pull that a little closer. There you go. And we want that to be fairly comfortable. Now, don't worry about it if the legs do not go all the way down flat. Don't worry about that. You're going to get some assistance here from gravity, okay? But we do want you to be in a comfortable position. So if you need to pull the chair closer or put it out further away, put it where it's the most comfortable for you. And then allow that stretch to happen. It would be really good if you could stay in this position for at least a minute, okay? Now, if you can not do both legs at the same time, you can do one leg at a time. If you're able, it's good to do start with one leg and then bring the other leg up and add that as well. And when you're doing this, what we want you to do is we want you to, if you can, I want you to lean forward just a little bit. You see Elaine's got nice flexibility here at the hips, okay? And that, you see how she can sit up nice and straight. Her hamstrings are pretty good here, so she's looking really good. That's one of the things I want you to be aware of when you're doing this exercise. Try not to lean back. When you lean all the way back like this, you tend to take your hamstrings on stretch so you don't get as much out of this exercise as you do when you are forward. Now for those of you who can't get to that position, that's okay. Start where you are. As you tend to do it and you're able to hold it longer, you will be able to progress to that. Okay. Any questions, Elaine, so far? <laughs> Feels good. Okay, mm -hmm. great. You're doing wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to have you take your legs back down. Good. Now, we are going to do another sitting exercise. And again, anytime you can work on your posture in these sitting exercises, it's wonderful to be able to do that. There's nothing worse as a physical therapist to have you see your patient doing this. Yeah, <laughs> and you want to feels, do that. Feels it feels good. That's right, it does. It's much harder to maintain this upright position. But unfortunately, this is where we need to be to get the best out of it, okay? Now, this next one, again, is going to be working the legs. And what I'm going to have you do is sitting in that position, I'm going to have you literally just pick your leg up and take it back down, okay? This works on not only flexibility, but it also gives us strength as well, okay? And I usually have you start out with five on each side, five on each side for each leg, and then progress as you can. Oh, any questions? Great. All right. Moving on. We are now going to talk about some standing things that we can do. And standing is one of those things that really plays havoc with our balance. Balance and posture both. Let me move this all the way out of the way here. Now, for posture, again, one of the things that we can do is you can use any wall in your house. Try to choose a wall that's free of clutter, nothing around it. And I want you to, let's use that wall right there. I'm going to have you face that wall, and I'm going to have you step up to it about eight inches away. Okay? There you go. Very good. Now, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you raise both your arms up and place them on the wall as high as you can. And then I want you to stretch into that, taking those arms as high up as you can, leaving your elbows straight and lean directly into that. Very, very good. And again, you see that we're working on some of the flexibility up here for posture and to get us more range of motion. Good. Now, another thing that I like to add to this exercise, I'm going to have you stand back for me. Let me just explain this a little bit. One of the things that we know 
as we not only age, but as we be, you know, with Parkinson's or any neurological diseases and it, all types of other diseases, is that we begin to see decreased balance. One of the things that begins to happen, particularly with Parkinson's, is as we start to see this, we have what we call hip excursion. With most of us, if I came up and somebody shoved me or gave me a little push, I would do this and I would literally step forward, and that's sort of coming from my ankles, okay? With Parkinson's patients and a lot of other diseases, what we see is that because they're already here, if somebody comes up to push them, what ends up happening is they do it from their hips, not from the ankles, okay? So the ankles become a very important part of being able to help us not only with posture, but also to maintain our balance. And so in order to keep our ankles working well, we need to use them, okay? And if you think about how much you use your ankles, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not as much as you think. And so we really have to work them. And one of the things that you can do to do that is included in this exercise. We kind of get two for one here. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you face there, and you're going to take a little bit of a step back so that you're going to be a little bit away. You're going to keep everything straight. You're going to put your arms up again really straight, and I want you to lean in from your ankles. I want you to lean in as far as you can, and if you can take your arms up a little bit. Yeah, oh, isn't she doing a beautiful job? Folks, look at this. Great. Now, I do want you to try and keep those heels on the ground as much as you can. Very, very good. Great. This is a wonderful little stretch here, not only for the ankles, but also for the upper body as well. Good. Now, the other thing that you can do for ankles while Elaine was sitting, the other thing we could have you do is we could also just have you working those ankles. You can pump them up and down. You can move them in circles. You can reverse them. There's lots of different things that you can come up with at home and be really creative. So think about that, okay? Just if you've got some ideas, use them. Go for it. The main thing is what you want to do is you want to remember to be safe. With anything that you do, safety is number one with exercise always. So I do want you to remember that safety is very important. Okay, now what we're going to have you do is I'm going to have you back up and you're actually going to have your back to the wall. Very good. Now, I don't want you to use the wall if you don't have to, okay? I want you to try and do it without touching the wall. But if at home, if you are not able to do this without hitting the wall, then you probably need to start at your kitchen sink first where you can hold on, okay? There is a progression, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. What I'm going to have you do is I'm literally just going to have you march in place, okay? How's that feel? <laughs> Good. She's doing a great job. Now, if at home this is difficult, what you can do is you can, you can use the wall. If you can use the wall and you can do it just one at a time, that's great. If not, you can rest now. You can go to your kitchen sink. You can start out with both hands if you need it. And as you start doing that, as it gets better, drop and use one hand, okay? As that gets better, use four fingers. Then go to two fingers. The more you practice, the more repetition, the easier it gets. And that's true with everything that you do, okay? Okay, now, one of the things that really becomes difficult, especially as we get a progression into the later stages of Parkinson's, is balance. Balance is a biggie. So we're going to be talking about a lot of things today that can help with balance. What we know is that if we cannot stand like this for five seconds, it's called a one-leg stance, then we know that we are at risk for an injury if we fall. So it becomes very important for us to work on things that can improve our balance, okay? One of the things that you can do is just that. The marching is one good thing, okay? Another thing that you can do is working on, and I want you to hold on, you can turn toward the wall here, and you can literally, from the hip, I want you to take your leg and move it back like this. Good job. How's she? Ah, doing great. That is a movement that becomes very difficult in Parkinson's because we don't use those. These are our hip extensors that are working. Those are not used really often. We tend not to use them much, and so they're very important to help us keep our balance. So that's a great exercise to be able to do. If you can do it without holding on, that's great. But you might, no, don't, that's okay. You don't, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, you can see that's, that's a little tough to do. But the more you practice, the easier it becomes, okay? Another one that you can do is out to the side. If you can take that leg out to the side. Very good, okay? Can you get, can you do one finger? <laughs> All right, 
Good job. Very good. Now, the next thing, another balance one, is making circles with that leg. Very good. And you can see how these are already going to make, make a big difference. And of course, you want to do that on both sides. And as you get better doing that, you can actually start to practice where you can take the leg out to the front, out to the side, out to the back, out to the front, out to the side, and out to the back. That's a little more difficult to do, but as, there's lots of ways to progress this as we go. All right, the next thing that we are going to talk about is turning. When you are walking, one of the hard things is turning, particularly for Parkinson's patients, because they tend to get a little bit nervous when we get into a corner. They start to feel a little bit tight that they're going to fall. And so one of the things that is really good to practice is literally turning. And whenever you turn, you want to remember that you want to take nice, small steps. You want to keep your base of support a little bit out here if you feel unsteady. The wider you put your legs out, if you get your legs about shoulder width apart, the more your stability. And that's what we call your base of support. And if you think about that, it makes really good sense. How many times you watch football on Sunday? Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. You see those guys on the front line. The other guys are going to try to knock them down. And where are they? They're way down here with those legs way out like this. And that's because they've lowered their center of gravity. They've widened their base of support. It makes them really stable. So one of the things that you can do is increase that base of support by widening your legs. And then as you turn, you want to take small steps around. Make sure that you do not cross your leg over the other leg. That's the fastest way to get tangled up, so don't cross. So just do a nice little 360 there for me, Elaine. Great job, very good. Now, go the other way for me. <laughs> she's, she's having to think about this. <laughs> and that's what you will find is that one, day, one way will be a little easier, wouldn't it? And don't ever back up. And, right, and backing up can be tough, that's right. And that's why it's so important to work on this. And that brings in the next exercise that we're actually going to do. What I'm going to have you do, because it's difficult with Parkinson's, is I want you to practice on side steps, both ways. So just practice coming to this side. Good. And then go back the other way. And what you'll probably find is that one way is a little bit tougher than the other. And then just front and back. So take some little steps to the front and some steps to the back. Going backwards is usually very scary. Number one, you can't see where you're going, okay? Most people feel like that they're going to fall backwards, okay? Most of the time, you're, with Parkinson's, you're going to go forward, but we need to practice both ways. So it's very important that, that you work on that. And just walking into a corner. Just turn and kind of just walk right over to that corner for me. Because sometimes what happens with Parkinson's, when they get into a little tight spot like this, it's very difficult. They get scared afraid they're going to fall, so it's good to practice doing that. Okay, makes sense? Great, okay. All right, let's have a seat for a second. Let's pull up our chairs, and we're going to talk. I want to just give you some tips on things that are really good as Parkinson's patients that it's good for you to know, okay? And these will be good little tips for you to know. <clears throat> as you're walking gets worse if it does. Hopefully you can keep it, prevent it that for a long time. But what happens is there are some things out there that can assist you. There are, what we know with Parkinson's is that auditory or sound cues and also visual cues can be very helpful when you're walking. So one of the things that you can actually do is if you're having trouble moving is you can actually get a metronome. You can get music that has a very distinct beat. You can snap your fingers or have somebody else snap them clap their hands. You can use all kinds of things like that that will help you to be able to keep moving, okay? One of the biggest things for Parkinson's patients is when you walk is to remember with every step, lift your toes. Lift your toes first. When you lift your toes, what happens is it actually initiates the movement of the foot and the leg. So if every step you take, you remember to lift those toes, you will find it will be easier. Now let's talk a little bit of, we said visual cues. Visual is one of the biggest things for Parkinson's patients. And something that you can do at home, you can take magazines, you can take red tape or blue tape, green tape, whatever, something that you can see really well. If you have a linoleum floor or wood floor, you can take this tape and make a grid on the floor. Because what we know is that stepping over lines, stepping over things like that, 
makes it much easier for Parkinson's people to walk. Okay, so those are some nice little tips to remember and also swinging your arms, okay? And because our arms tend to lose that, that swing and then also you can use like rolled up magazines in the arms to help you get that swing, okay? We have enjoyed being with you today. I think that pretty much concludes the end of, of what we had to bring to you. We hope that we gave you some very useful and helpful information for you to use at home and not just for Parkinson's but also for some other people at, at home as well and we wish you luck with that. I want to thank Chef's Pizza Downtown Kingsport for making it possible. Since 1991 they have been striving to provide a healthy eating alternative. They have whole wheat pizza made out of honey instead of sugar. They have my personal favorite salad bar with potatoes and um, soup, variety of soups daily Monday through Saturday so it's a great place downtown Kingsport to pick you up a healthy meal thanks again chefs and after you start losing all that weight you're gonna want to go after some new clothes so you can look great so head on over to the sophisticated starlet a great place to shop downtown they offer women's clothing shoes accessories and jewelry I would also like to thank Walmart for um, supplying us with the fitness equipment that we'll be using today and you can find all of our sponsors on Facebook